Oh my god, man. Every day we get a new detail about FF7, you know, in terms of Rebirth or Crisis Core Reunion. And it just sets the internet on fire, man. Well, I'm here today. I want to talk about the new details from the Square Enix website. I want to talk about Crisis Core basically from their perspective. And uh, the Fumi uh, Fumitsu interview, yeah, with Audrey that she translated uh, and put out on her Twitter, right? So we're going to start today off by going over to Crisis Core here. So we're on the official Square Enix site here, and they just posted a new blog. They had posted one before about the changes to the game, and they actually like elaborated on some more of the gameplay aspects, which I truly love so far. So if we go through this, there's a lot of new screenshots, right, that they've kind of uploaded. Bahamut, you can see here, dude, straight from Remake. Um, I saw this in Random Black Gamer's video as well. He mentioned this, that um, all of the summon assets have been like taken from Remake and put into Crisis Core Reunion. So it even shows that, you know, although there might be some new stuff in here to tie into Remake or add something special in terms of hype, um, they're really going along with the continuity, not, with, not just with like the voice actors, right? But as you can see here, with the summons, man, they look drastically different and they're the same summon models from Remake. So let's read some of the details here. We have, now the game is making a return on modern platforms with massively enhanced and improved version of the game. God, I love this. I can't get enough of this. This is so much more than a simple HD remaster. We're talking completely refreshed visuals, improvements to the game systems, and a newly rearranged soundtrack, additional dialogue, and more. So it's just insane, man. This seems like the biggest remaster I've ever experienced. Like, even Final Fantasy X HD remaster was nowhere near this kind of like effort and budget and all this stuff so oh, every time i hear this stuff and i see these screenshots my mind is just blown so the main thing i wanted to talk about is um we'll get into the story stuff later with the famitsu interview with nomura and all that stuff but uh yeah as you can see the voice actors did change we were on that but it's not just zach and sephiroth that got changed all of the voice actors got changed so you see here, Angel Hewley is by Bill Millshap. Uh, it was some sort of Josh guy before that. I don't remember them because they weren't really um, insignificant roles or uh, continued their voice work or anything like that. But uh, as you can see with this image, actually, with Angel, they kind of painted over the Buster Sword. So, like, right, these scenes are all done with brand new models. So this is probably just the remake model implemented into the game. But even in the CGI and this Angeal screenshot, look here, even this doesn't even have the gold trimming, right? They went in here with Photoshop and they changed it, right? So now he has a faithful Buster Sword, so that's cool. But yeah, as I said, man, all of the voice actors are different now. And um, you can see with Genesis as well, Sean Condy. Uh, this guy was actually like Oliver or something in the original PSP. So yeah, even Genesis got changed, man. So um, there's, they just changed everybody, right? When they changed the voice actors for FF7, they really just changed everybody. Nobody stuck around unless they were playing like a smaller role or something like that. So yeah, here we have Tyler Hecklin. I know a lot of us are gonna be bummed that uh, it's not George Newbern, you know, whatever, right? You know, no Andrea Bowen, Brianna White this time. So let's go down to the gameplay enhancements here, right? So we'll look at some of the enhancements. So they showed off this screenshot comparison. You can totally tell that um, Crisis Core, like I don't know what you would say this is, like 480p, maybe less than that. This was running on, um, God, I hate how they do this. I can't just pull up the image, right? Now I gotta go all the way down here. But yeah, this was probably running at like 480p, you know, maybe even less. And then here we have like the brand new redone. Uh, this game is actually being reworked in Unreal Engine 4. Uh, they talk about that a little bit later, right? But yeah, everything is rendered in HD, makes the story even more immersive than before. And I am just loving it, um, right? I don't like that his Mako eyes aren't as pronounced, but you know, man, it, it looks pretty damn good. It really does. And now they start to talk about the game system improvements. So the camera and the character movements have been vastly improved from the original. It still maintains the fun feel that was at the core of that game. So this is really, really cool because Crisis Core had a fixed camera angle. Um, unless you were moving around on the field to get Zack from point A to point B, in battle, you could not change the camera. Um, you kind of just had to bring Zack around 
Uh, it was kind of a pain in the ass, but you know, the PSP hardware was very, very limited. So that was kind of just something you had to put up with. But this being in here is so sick. And that just shows how much different this game is going to feel in terms of uh, playing it in combat and all that stuff. And also they talk about the user interface has also been optimized to the latest hardware generations. Various skip features have been added for even more enjoyable and convenient gameplay experience. So this is awesome because Crisis Core did not allow you to skip cutscenes. If you got, you know, killed in one of the many Genesis fights in the game, you know, they're a little bit more challenging. Some are drastically harder than others. If you got killed, man, you had to watch the whole thing again. The poetry, the monologue, the back and forth. So this being in here is amazing, right? They're really uh, taking the player perspective into account, especially when uh, people were talking about this back in the day, how, you know, there wasn't skippable cutscenes. Uh, sound improvements, right? Takaharu Ishimoto is coming back. The original composer, uh, he did Crisis Core. He did some music for Dirge, possibly, I think. And then he also did uh, Type Zero. So he's actually a great composer. He's probably my second favorite at Square after Nobuo Uematsu. He really was, um, I think the style of this music, the metal and the piano and the various renditions of um, the Crisis Core theme are really sick. And uh, so in terms of sound improvements, they also talk about how um, the full voiceover has been added to scenes that were previously text only. So now you can enjoy the entire story fully voiced. So I might have talked about this in uh, my YouTube video, my last YouTube video, but yeah, all that stuff of like chasing the kid around Sector 5 that steals your wallet, you know, spoilers, sorry. Um, but all that stuff was mostly text related. Um, Zach and Aerith did not speak with full voice over you know in those cutscenes so this is actually gonna be really cool it's gonna feel a lot more um engaging and immersive and not just uh probably not so so much filler as it did before um and this is what's really cool man the battle system they talked about this here so crisis core uses a combat system that combines combat command based systems with action gameplay massive improvements to the control and camera have evolved the action to create an even more thrilling experience in the original so during battle, you take control of Zack and can attack enemies directly with his sword skills and by using preset magic and abilities from equipped materia. No longer is his like four hit combo, this, you know, press by press combo. Now it's actually kind of like more suited to remake when you're attacking with the square button where, um, you know, Zack has these new animations. He has more of a combo system when he attacks rather than the rigid and, uh, you know, um, simpleness to the original where you just had the four attacks and that was it and then they were also very um limited in terms of their range so all of his slashing mechanics have been redone and they're more likely to like combo and hit multiple enemies um it was possible in the original game but now you're gonna hit way more okay so sato all right the concept behind it is to change the battle system so it feels a lot more dynamic a lot faster and make it feel a lot more like the combat and remake does says creative director Tetsuya Nomura. Um, Sato is another dude who's working on the game, the producer. He says, we really did try and merge the feeling of a modern action game with the original experience you got from Crisis Core. To make it feel like even for modern players coming to it now, it doesn't feel old fashioned. It feels really in line with the kind of things people expect from modern games. So he's saying like, yeah, it was a little rigid. Um, the ability system was cool, but we want this game to feel like remake. We want the combat to feel like Remake because why not? You know, the combat in Remake is amazing. It's probably one of the greatest action RPG battle systems of all time. So then they talk about the three major changes. Um, as I was telling you guys before about Zack's sword combo, the basic sword attacks can be tied together as combos rather than being individual button presses. So yeah, like I said, it's just this crazy combo thing now that's gonna hit lots of enemies. Secondly, magic and abilities can now be set to one button shortcuts for use instantly. Now, this is such a cool thing because if you watch the trailer for Reunion, you kind of see this in play when he's fighting the Behemoth in, um, what is that, Sector 7 or Sector 8 with the Fountain, right? And he's fighting the thing, and you can tell that the new system, uh, now it's more like hotkeys. So you're going to go into the menu and, like, yeah, hold down R1 and push triangle, or hold down R1 and push circle button, right? And that'll be set to, you know, Assault Twister, or uh, fire or blizzard or thunder, you know, you're gonna set these abilities and spells to shortcuts and it's gonna feel a lot better. And then finally, we're getting the stuff about the digital mind wave. So 
the digital mind wave feature has been reworked so that limit breaks and summons are still randomized through a slot machine but can be stored for use when the player needs they essentially said that the digital mind wave has been changed to kind of like a toggle sort of mechanic so in the original you had to kind of just put up with it and in the beginning of the game it's really cool because you get these various status boosts like it says here and you get these ultimate you know devastating attacks from uh that are themed around the characters that you meet in the game and one annoying thing is once you get stronger in crisis core right where you start doing max damage and you get things like costly punch which do like 99,999 damage the dmw became very kind of annoying in the sense that it was um it didn't put out as much damage as you would on the field or uh, with your standard abilities and then it would just constantly happen and you had no control over it this will be a neat mechanic because it's not going to keep interrupting your gameplay when you're playing the game right you'd be playing and you'd be like all right i'm doing all this damage and all of a sudden okay i have to do the angeal thing i have to do the sephiroth attack i have to do you know the era thing and this is like really cool because it adds that whole new level of strategy so you can be like all right um i have an Aerith saved up which is gonna fully heal me and give me temporary invincibility i'm just gonna save that right and if i get into dire straits where i'm in like a really sticky situation bam i'm gonna you know i don't know what button it's gonna be hit triangle and then you're good it's gonna come out heal you give you that invincibility and then you're gonna be good and then while you're fighting that boss or enemy the DMW is going to be going and then you're going to have the option probably to um, toggle it or not. So I think that's really, really neat. Okay, so new voice acting. Uh, Nomura confirms the game is now fully voiced unlike the original. English language voice track has also been recast to align it with the same actors who worked on Remake. So this is uh, the shitty thing. I saw a lot of this on Twitter. People were saying like, oh, you know, just bring the old people back because it's the same dialogue. Um, they say this and they also say that Gact uh, is revoicing Genesis, but he didn't record anything new. They're actually using the same voice lines of Gact from the original PSP. So I think the reason they did this was honestly just continuity. Um, there might be something new in this game that is going to tie into what we're going to see in Rebirth, like a brand new detail. And so instead of being like, all right, Caleb Pearson remake, then, uh, you know, back to Rick Gomez for a reunion, and then back to Caleb per, uh, Pierce for a rebirth, you know, it would just be stupid. So I kind of get why they did this. I mean, I'm team Gomez all the way, man. 100%, I want Rick Gomez to reprise uh, his role as Zack, because I think he's one of the best voices that was in the whole FF7 compilation. But uh, unfortunately, yeah, this just makes much more sense to kind of like not confuse people and be like, all right, well, his voice was this way. And now it's back to this way, and now it's that. It's just, they said, fuck it, you know, we're gonna pay him, and we'll just revoice the game. It's mostly the same lines, but I'm hoping that um, they translate the dialogue with this kind of opportunity for it. All right, so now we get into some other details. I think people who have played the original, there are a lot of differences that they will experience. I'd love people to look into and enjoy what's changed and how it's been updated. So this makes me very, very excited. So now we can move on to some like translations from Audrey. Uh, this is from Four Gamer. Okay, please tell us more about Reunion. The original Crisis Core is a prequel to FF7 and plays a vital role to the compilation story. It became a very popular title as well. As a result, the fans' response was huge after hearing of the HD remaster. Okay, Katase. In FF7 Remake, Zack makes much more appearances than in the original game. Because of that, we wanted people who played FF7 Remake to have a deep dive into who exactly is Zack. That's why we decided to do an HD remaster of Crisis Core, where Zack is the protagonist. And fans could play as him to see his story. I'm very glad that many fans were happy to hear we were working on an HD remaster. I was very happy, sir. I was ecstatic. Thank you very much. Um, but yeah, you know, I keep thinking about something Maximilian Dude said in one of his podcasts with Easy Allies, where he was saying that... Crisis Core Reunion, right, is to, you know, they're remastering Crisis Core and bringing it back into the picture to tell these new players about Zack. But at the same time, right, this is going to kind of spoil the story about Cloud and who he really is and what is exactly the truth. So I think that um, there might be like a different sort of plot twist. This is what Max Dude was saying is that there, since people are going to know that Zack was actually the first 
or uh, the first class soldier and not Cloud. Cloud was the infantryman. There might be like a brand new twist to the story involving Zack and this alternate timeline that we're not expecting that could really blow our mind. So I would really look forward to that. I think that would be really cool. Uh, next question is, I'm not sure if it's alright to ask this, but since Crisis Core will be releasing and is apparently supposed to connect with FF7R, does that mean the story will change? Kitase says, the story will be faithfully reproduced with respect to the original material. We will not change the story as a result of influence from FF7R. The parts that will be similar to FF7R are related to assets and battle elements. Nomura, we made some adjustments visually to fit in with FF7R, such as the Buster Sword and the Summons designs. So they were like, yeah, we got these assets, let's put them in here, since we're kind of like changing a lot of this stuff. But, uh, you know, the ending you're expecting, that's still going to be in the game. That's still going to be the case, because if it wasn't, um, there would be kind of like some weirdness going on in terms of continuity. I know people say like, well, if it is tying into, you know, remake with Zack living, like, shouldn't he live in the ending? And I think that... Um, that wouldn't make a whole lot of sense, especially since you have to know the original ending to see how FF7R is changing that ending. It's some kind of surprise in the story. Regarding why we will leave it unchanged, if we are to change it, then the differences we have shown with the FF7R project compared to the original will be for naught. So yeah, exactly what I was just saying. For the FF7R project, if you are to play it through to the end, you will see a mystery unravel before you. We do not plan to change the past, and on the same note, we do not want to modify or add anything to Crisis Core FF7R because history has not been changed. So uh, this just goes on to the philosophy that FF7 Remake and uh, this new lore in the story is, you know, mostly a sequel. It's mostly a sequel and it's not here to replace anything. Um, they're kind of like saying like, yeah, we don't have anything new for you in this game, but I still am holding out hope that there's going to be something. There's going to be a slight something, right, that people can kind of speculate and talk about. Um, by the time this game comes out, there will probably be a new trailer for Re uh, Rebirth because, you know, Game Awards are going to be coming out. Um, Tokyo Game Show is in September. You might see something there. So, um, yeah, you got to keep your eyes peeled and your ears open. So what are you saying? So what you are saying is that even though the FF7R project is portrayed differently than the original, what happens up until that point remains the same. Yes, exactly. It might give you a sense of uneasiness or foster doubt, so you might ask why is Zack heading to Midgar with Cloud in FF7 Rebirth's trailer? Well, the answers will unfold as you play FF7 Rebirth. So yeah, they had to keep it this way because, you know, if you were going to make changes to Crisis Core, that's like making changes to the original FF7. Like, alright, we're putting it out on uh, PS5, FF7 Reunion Edition, right? You know, you don't, you don't want to see any whispers or anything in that because, right? Remake is showing you what is different and how the timeline is changing. So they don't want to mess with the original story at all. They might put in like, you know, a slight change to the translations and the dialogue, but I don't think um, it's going to be anything super significant. 